Now, those compounds that don't exchange electrons but actually share them, well, those are made up of non-metals when they bond together to lower their total amount of energy. Those are called molecules and they, because they share charge, that's covalent. And so covalent bonding is when non-metals get together and form those units of lower energy. Okay, so how do you name those? Because, well, they can be a little bit different and erratic in terms of how they come together. For instance, you know that when carbon comes together with oxygen, you can get CO2, carbon dioxide. But you know there's also a more deadly type of form of carbon-oxygen combination, that's CO, carbon monoxide. So, there's two ways of putting together carbons with oxygens that are quite popular. There are actually quite a few more ways than that. So, how do we name that? Well, one carbon, one oxygen. So, generally, we take the first element, we just go carbon, and the second one, we say monoxide. That stands for monooxide. Mono is one. As opposed to carbon dioxide, one carbon, two oxygens. So, we use a prefix system to help us to name things that bond covalently, and those are just non-metals when they're coming together. So, CO, carbon monoxide, CO2, carbon dioxide, there's a CO3, so that's carbon trioxide. Mono, di, tri, tetra for four. Penta, hexa, hepta, octa, nana, deca. Let's do a few. Here we got some compounds here that are made up of strictly non-metals. They don't have charges, so they're not these polyatomic ions. So they have to be named either with a common name or using this prefix system. Tetra, phosphorus, deca, oxide. Not bad. How about this one? Two N's and four O's. Di, nitrogen, tetra, oxide. And for this one here, that would be arsenic, tri, chloride. Okay, so you know those prefixes and you've got to memorize them, you'll be able to name all of these. Well, then there are some common ones that you better be able to figure out too. Some chemicals have common names that you just have to know. We wouldn't call that trioxygen, we just call it ozone. So that's one you've got to memorize. How about this one? Okay, if you don't know water by now, ouch. So H2O is water, dihydrogen oxide, uh -uh, water. Now, that one, that's a little bit tricky, C12H22O11, that's sucrose. There's also C6H12O6, that's glucose, and your teacher might want you to memorize that one too. How about this one, NH3, that's that smelly stuff that's in a lot of floor cleaner, it's called ammonia. Not to be confused with the one on the polyatomic ion chart, NH4 positive, which is ammonium. Get the two straight, that's ammonia. Ah. This one is methane. Methane is a, is a gas that we extract out of the ground. It's a fossil fuel, and that's a very popular one to know. C2H6 is also ethane, another mixture in natural gas. A lot of times, natural gas needs to be purified. And in a province that I live in, Alberta, so much of the methane that we take out of the ground is mixed with this that could cause acid rain if it burned. So you got to get rid of it. It's also poisonous as all get out. That well, it looks like it's dihydrogen sulfide, but the common name, real easy, is hydrogen sulfide. Deadly gas. If I said oxygen to you, you'd say O2 as a formula. Well, there are some elements on the periodic table that I had on here before that, well, when they naturally occur, they don't occur as individual atoms, but as atoms bonded together to make molecules. Now some of these are very common, that's easy to understand, and there is kind of a little strategy for remembering them. Now, the ones that are diatomic, two atoms, are N2 and O2, they're right next to each other in the periodic table, and then all of the halogens in, in group 7, along with hydrogen, take hydrogen from the first uh, group of the periodic table and slide it over next to helium, N2, O2, and all of group 7 are diatomic. Atomic. Ask the teams down here to AT. So, diatomic, what do you have to know? NO, you got to know group 7. When I say no group 7, that should remind you that NO and all of group 7 are diatomic. Then there are two other ones on the table. S is 8 and P is 4. Remember, S8, P4, and no group 7, and you're going to be fine. 
Those are molecules that we find in nature that really are representing their individual atoms.